Can you get a healthy relationship out of one born of limerence? What is limerence? Limerence is an obsession for somebody else. It's kind of like you've got tunnel vision for this other person. You almost can't think about anything else. You've got tunnel vision for this person and every other priority in your life comes second to that. So that's what we're talking about today in this video. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell from divorcedparentsclub.com and I'm glad you're here with me. So we know that limerence is kind of unhealthy by its very nature. It's driven by a huge spike in the brain of dopamine and that creates this euphoric feeling that we get from this other person. Usually they're feeling it too and it's two people kind of coming together in that limerent state. It doesn't have to be that way though. Often it is also born out of an affair, meaning that person A and person B are in a relationship, maybe they're married or in a long-term committed relationship, and one of them becomes limerent with someone else. That's the typical scenario, but again, it doesn't have to happen that way. So does every relationship go through limerence? After all, we all kind of start off with that crush and then infatuation with somebody, and then we kind of build on that and that kind of thing, and the answer is no. Most relationships do not have a limerence phase in them. Really only about 5% of relationships go through limerence. So 95% of us never experience this. So what kind of people are prone to limerence? Who are those 5% of the population that do experience limerence? Not surprisingly, they do have some challenges in their attachment style. That's how we attach to other people in romantic relationships. There are three attachment styles, I should say. There is anxious, avoidant, and secure, and then some people believe that within the avoidant style, there's multiple styles of that. But really, for our purposes, we're gonna say there are three attachment styles. Ironically, the person who is experiencing limerence could be in two of those three categories, so let's talk about that. So first, the secure attachment style is ultimately where we all wanna be. That's where we feel secure in and of ourselves, and we don't need somebody else to feel complete and whole as a person. We are a whole, complete person, and then we meet another whole complete person and then it's two whole and complete people coming together to really just sort of enrich each other's lives but we're not codependent on one another for our sense of self-worth and self-being so anxious attachment style people can definitely fall into limerence I do tend to be that way naturally and that by very nature means that I'm I'm a little nervous I'm a little clingy I'm a little needy maybe especially if they are an avoidant attachment style person because then they're pulling away and it makes me want to cling tighter and then that pushes them further away and basically just blows up in our face but an anxious attachment style person, like I said, can be a little bit needy and clingy. And so when they feel that dopamine spike, that those feelings of limerence for this other person, it just feels crazy and they just want as much of it as they can and they're just kind of clinging tightly to that. Now, oftentimes the other person that is experiencing limerence with them, and so they're kind of feeling the same way, at least for a period of time. We'll get into how long a period of time that is a little bit later in the video. But ironically, avoidant attachment style people also fall into limerence occasionally. And the reason for that is because typically an avoidant style person, all of these uh, issues really are rooted in childhood, but typically an avoidant style person got injured as a child, either emotionally, mentally, physically, sexually, they got injured and they learned that the only way to stay safe is to kind of keep people at arm's length. And that's how they've conducted themselves throughout their adult life. Now, ironically for them, they actually love and crave and want love and connection with other people, but they don't know how to get it because they don't want to feel unsafe. So they still are keeping people this way. When they fall into limerence, because it's not a 100% real relationship, because like I said, oftentimes this is starting as the result of an affair, so oftentimes it allows them to still kind of keep this other person at arm's length while feeling that dopamine spike and that desire and all of those feelings because it's not a real relationship, at least not yet. And that's what we're getting into in this video really is it can it become a real relationship? But because it's not in the early stages, it fits perfectly with the avoidant attachment style person's kind of way of being. And so naturally, both anxious attachment style people and avoidant attachment style people, naturally they are kind of co dependent upon each other. Neither one of them feel whole and complete in and of themselves, and so they need another person to feel whole and complete with themselves. So really, we're talking about codependency here. And so that 5% of the population that is drawn to limerent relationships 
does tend to be people that struggle with codependency. Real quick before we keep going, if you like this video and you want to see more videos like it, hit that like button, then smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. And if you have an idea for a future video, leave me that in the comments down below. Is limerence always a bad thing? And the short answer is yeah, it often is, but it doesn't have to be. And let me tell you why. I mentioned at the start of the video that limerence is frequently born as the result of an affair. So by its very definition, if you're talking about a situation that was born out of an affair, we're talking about a relationship that was built on lies and deceit. That's kind of like building a house of cards and it's just not going to be able to sustain itself. You don't want to have a relationship that was born out of lies and deceit. Why? Because naturally, the relationship over time will kind of give you more of that same thing. You can't have a relationship that is trustworthy and loving and caring if it was started on a foundation of lies. It's just not going to work. But if you were talking about a relationship that was not started as the result of an affair, then yes, it could be a good thing. You just need to recognize, or the person you're, you're, who you're talking about who's in a limerent relationship, they need to recognize that eventually those dopamine levels will come back down to normal. Then at that point, it's kind of like the blinders are off and you're seeing this other person for really who they are 100%. You're seeing all of their flaws and you're no longer as infatuated with them as you once were were. And kind of when you get to that stage, that's when it starts to get real. And oftentimes in a limerent relationship, especially one born out of an affair, that's when the feelings of guilt and regret and like, oh my God, what, what did I see in this person? Because you're seeing them in a much more realistic light than you were when those dopamine levels were high. So is limerence always reciprocated? That's another good question. And the short answer is yes, because in order for you to feel that dopamine spike from this other person, there has to be some level of interaction between you and them. It's not the same as like you're, you're walking down the street and you see an attractive woman over there and you think, oh God, she's really hot. And, and then you, you're not going to get a dopamine spike from that. You might think she's attractive and you might even want to like go up and ask her, her phone number or things like that. But you're not going to experience limerence until you've actually interacted with them on a emotional, chemical, hormonal level. And then oftentimes they're going to kind of feel that same thing back from you and then you're kind of like escalating each other until you're both in that limerent phase. And again, as I mentioned earlier, most likely both of you have some level of codependency and some sort of attachment style that is not a secure attachment style. But even though it is often reciprocated, it, it's never a case where it's totally one-sided, it does unfortunately almost always have a lifespan. Now I'm going to get into the actual statistics of the success rates of limerent relationships a little bit later in the video. But just to know that typically we are talking about a lifespan of anywhere from three months to three years. And I know that's a wide range. I do have several other videos on the subject of limerence. So if you want to know more about how to gauge where you or another person is at in that time frame of that three months to three years, check out some of the other videos. I'm going to leave a card for it at the end of this video. You'll see it right up here. And then you'll also see it in the description down below. But watch that video if you want to know basically how to figure out where you're at on the timeline. But just know that it does typically end most of the time. So what are the actual statistics of the success rates? What are your chances if you're in a limerent relationship or maybe your, your wife is in one? What are the actual chances of that relationship succeeding? Well, as I mentioned earlier, if indeed the relationship was born out of an affair, unfortunately, the failure rate is going to be somewhere between 75 and 85%. In other words, it's astronomically high. Second marriages, if that's what we're talking about here, the divorce rate is already high, but if it was born out of an affair, it's almost always doomed to failure. And that's for the very reason I mentioned a second ago, it's because you're building something that you want to be honest and noble and trustworthy, but you're building it on a foundation of lies and deceit. And that's just never a good way to go about starting a relationship. However, if your limerent relationship was not born out of an affair, in other words, you weren't seeing somebody or married to somebody or dating somebody exclusively when you met this other person and began to feel those feelings of limerence, the good news is the success rate for that is much higher, somewhere around 55, maybe even 60%. But like I said, the dopamine levels will drop. 
you will start to see each other in a much more realistic light. And when that happens, you just have to be honest with yourself about what you're looking for. You have to be honest with them about what they're looking for. And you have to kind of like be realistic about the fact that in relationships, there's give and there's take and there's compromise and things like that. And when you're in the limerent phase and those dopamine levels are high, you're not thinking like that. But you will eventually get to a place where those levels drop and you're going to have to look at it in a much more pragmatic light if you want the relationship to succeed. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.